OK, so here's why we really want to use polar form. It's for multiplication and division. Using Cartesian form, using rectangular form, you end up with a big binomial thing you have to expand and collect like terms and so on. This actually comes up with a much simpler um, way that actually has a very straightforward geometric interpretation. Now, I'm going to walk you quickly through this algebraic mess. You don't have to be able to reproduce this necessarily. Let me quickly show you your uh, syllabus. You have to be able to use modulus and argument. No, it's not the one for here. Define and use multiplication, division, and powers and the geometric interpretation. It doesn't say you have to be able to derive it. Okay? But let me sh quickly walk you through, show you what the textbook has here. Suppose I have two complex numbers written in polar form, and that's important. R1 cis theta 1 and R2 cis theta 2. If I'm going to multiply them, well, first we expand the cis to cos plus i sine, so we make sure we know what we're doing. We do that with both of them. So we put R1 in each of those terms and R2 in each of those terms. Well, that means there's this times both of these plus this times both of these. That's just my binomial expansion. There it is in a big messy mess. Now, i squared becomes negative 1. Here are the real parts, and here are the imaginary parts. Now, what you've got here is some complex-looking trig, but they follow a very clear pattern. Now, Year 12s, you should recognise this pattern. Year 11s, they are on your formula sheet like this, and we'll do them next year. For now, just trust us. Um, this simplifies to just the cos of the sum of the angles. And this simplifies to just the sine of the sum of the angles. So what does that mean? It means my product is equal to the product of the moduli as the modulus, and the argument of my answer is the sum of the arguments of the two numbers I started with. For complex numbers, and this is the result you really do need to learn and write down, when you multiply complex numbers in polar form, you multiply the modulus and you add the arguments. Now the textbook doesn't include one of these diagrams, but I actually think it helps. This shows you the geometric interpretation. The product of this complex number here and this complex number here, the length of it is the product of R1 and R2. So we've multiplied the lengths together. And the angle, the argument, is this angle plus this angle. Get this one and stick it on the end of that one. So we've multiplied the lengths and we've added the arguments. Here's another one, just another website I found another one on. So this number times this number, the length is the product. Now, don't worry too much about the e to the i theta, that's coming later, right? That's, that involves all this theorem. And anyway, we'll get there later. Just think for the moment, right? The, the lengths we multiply and the angle of this one and this one we add together to get that one. Notice sometimes we'll end up further around than pi. So to write our answer, we'll convert back to this angle here, between 0 and negative pi. And correspondingly, if I'm dividing two complex numbers in polar form, I'm going to divide the modulus, and I'm going to subtract the argument. Divide the moduli, subtract the arguments. Um, it's exactly the same as division versus multiplication any other time. So if we were multiplying by the inverse of z, we'd be multiplying by the inverse of its modulus, dividing by it, and we'd be adding the negative angle. So we're subtracting the angle. 